Hey guys, my name is Yara Rocha and I am very excited to be here today to share a little bit about my creation process doing Capri based on an awesome concept by Baldi Conjin. Please go check this portfolio, guys, amazing. Uh, this is not a tutorial, it's more of a breakdown where I show the I show my process and please keep in mind that English is not my first language and I'm still learning it so I uh, will probably sound a little bit confused sometimes so if you have any question please feel free to send me over um, the first part of my creation process is to gather references uh, and it includes also like find a good concept or a cool illustration and it was the case uh, this concept was made by Baud Konji go check him out this portfolio guy is amazing well uh, I choose it for for some uh, some reasons uh, first of all, like my first intention in this project was to make it PBR. So I found it cool how how different kinds of materials uh, is integrated in this illustration. Like here, um, I don't know, um, insective material, and here a, a gold material, here a blob material. So uh, it is. Uh, it has a, a lot of different uh, stuff to work on. Uh, also, it has a strong silhouette. Uh, it, it like in it kind of make the concept interesting to 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 know the story about it. So I was passionate also about the story of this 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 big monster. The way it looks to this, this little bit here, like I was thinking. Man, he, why he is he's looking so so interested and curious uh, on this this baby? So yeah, my intention was to see this this big boy animated. So I said, okay, this would be cool to work with. Uh, the second part is to to find references that match the final quality I want to to give. To the modeling and texturing. So I am really passionate about League of Legends art style, so it was my main quality final reference. So I chose like Baron Asher and Harold to, to be my main like artwork reference uh, of texturing, modeling, animation. Yeah. Uh, here are a good references for like this was a late reference that I chose in the in the texturing process because I wasn't like understanding how I could work better the materials in the painting so this was this is like a good example of a good execution like uh, what the goods looks like basically and here are um references from life since i know that um Baldi used a beatles as reference because he 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 did like a god uh, egyptian god that has a beetle head is represented with a beetle head so he probably uses like real beetle as references. Uh, here's some gold material reference too to help me guide me in the painting process. Uh, and here are references for the for the back part and the and the wings, little wings in the back part too, and how I could like paint the 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 big wings material. And make it look nice yeah so hey let's jump to the modern part 
Uh, but before I need to make some notes here, some uh, observations. Uh, I knew that this concept was inspired by Egyptian mythology, a god called uh, Capri. Uh, it's a scarab sun deity often symbolized with the birth and creation, and that's the reason why probably Baudi did this monster holding a, a baby and look into it inside of ball. Uh, so I took the freedom to think like what could be what would be the this monster lore and what would be this, the function of this monster in a game for example. I defined this would be a boss and his function uh, would be to protect and defend the child inside the the little balls against the player, and the player function probably would be st st steal it. Uh, yeah, and, and since I didn't have the, the back part concept, and he is all kind of armored, I decided that the fragile part would be in the back, and the player, the player uh, should like target that back part to give more damage, for example. Uh, and and why I'm I'm talking I'm saying all this. So I need you to understand, to know that to understand so, some of my decisions through the process, some of the design decisions, and and think about the function previously helped me a lot to take decisions. I didn't have this back part concept, so I needed to imagine this and define these functions made it a way easier to to go forward. So um, is in this blocking phase uh, when I start to build the modeling just thinking about general proportions uh, nothing detailed too much just rough sketch trying to capture the concept idea also was in this part uh, in this phase when i started to understand what could be the the back part um, and using that references that i showed before i thought that would be interested in having this this structure uh, to be the fragile part since the concept doesn't demonstrate that these wing shells are capable of fully closed. So he would be like 100% protected in the front, but then fragile in the back part. So in the middle of the production of the blocking, I had to to stop to define some some other um, good details, not caring that much about like polishment, but this was important to me to understand how I would go forward with the pipeline. So I decided that I would need a second blocking phase. Uh, the the phase one consisted basically by doing this kind of blob blocking, just uh, just constructing. To like figure out how proportion would work, uh, and then the, the second phase consisted by going into details, but not not polishment, just uh, just to know how things uh, would work. So uh, this first step I did with the head, uh, I throw it uh, into Blender. For example, I needed to to know like okay, how I will make this this detail be nice. Like I, I I've never done before this. I've never done. I had never done this kind of uh, this kind of like hard surface polish modeling. Like I did, but not like hard surface with uh, organic. So I needed to figure it out. So I I, I I imported into Blender and did a, a quick retopology, and and this retopology was not meant to be like 
uh, a super super good topology with full of quads, but it needed to work as I intended when I applied the the subdivision. So uh, after that, I went I went back to ZBrush again and imported this asset right here. And what I did was basically work in some, some crazies in the model. Without the crazies, the modeling would look, would look like this. All is smoothed, and this, this is not the final result that I wanted. So I worked it with Z modeler with the crease tool. Uh, and, and here you have some options like edge loop complete, edge loop partial, and pod loop. Uh, and what I need now is the edge loop complete. It means when I when I check, when I select some, some edge here, uh, the crease will follow the overall loop until the end. So when I do it, like the, the crease, uh, it works to maintain the silhouette in a in an edge, so it's kind of a hard edge work. Uh, so yeah, I did it in the all the whole model like this. Here, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh, my workflow for this this uh, golden detail uh, consisted basically doing it, doing like uh, rough sketch inside the brush, and going into Blender, doing a quick retopology, going back to the brush and apply some some creases. And as you can see here, for example, in this model, I had a, already uh, worked at some polygroups as well. And work with polygroups is really important and, and useful. For example, I did it using the Z modeler too, as well, using the polygroup here. And you can like choose the target. So like if, if I want to uh, a group polygons by Polygroup Island. I can come here. Uh, yeah, change stuff by holding Alt. But you can do it as well, doing by polygons. This is a good way to work. Like using polygroups, I can just um, select uh, a polygroup and work with it separately. Like it's, it's very, very useful. And as you can see, like, for example, this was one of my my um, workflows, but it's not the only one. Um, the head, for example, I didn't do it in Blender. I did it uh, just inside the brush. And there are others. Uh, other objects that are working like this as well. Uh, these objects, for example, I use the workflow inside ZBrush using Extract and Z, Z Remesher. And and workflow consisted by like um, selecting an area uh, that I that I want to to extract and make a new mesh. So let's let's pretend that I'm redoing those meshes. 
Okay, this is the area I want to extract. I come here to extract. Um, so the thickness here probably will be another number. You put it on zero. Extract, accept. Okay, cool. Uh, now we will work some zero meshes calculations to to get a nice uh, flow. Okay, now you have a nice flow. So we jump to the deformation window and work with polish by feature. So you have a better, nice, small fit like loops here. And coming back to Z modeler, we have an, uh, another nice tool here. Is the key mesh. The key mesh work as a extrude, so you can create volume. And this is another workflow I use it for some objects that I that I thought okay that there's no need to go to to Blender now because um, it's a little bit. Uh, organic too much, so I don't need to have uh, straight lines like this. It's not not. It would be easy to work in zip. That's a brush, for example. The next step was to apply the same um, the same workflow and the whole model and get everything at the same level. And this is important. Uh, because uh, when you when you have things in the same stage, it it is easier to to know what is working and what is not. In this case, what I saw that was not working very well was the the back part was was still not what I wanted, and then I was not dealing very good with it. But that but it was okay. That was. I thought this is, was not a, the the moment to to think about the back part yet. My main concern was to have the whole high poly um, ready. So yeah, as you can see here, for example, and the next step after that was to apply the dynamic uh, subdivision. And start to 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 add fine details in the in the sculpture. <laughs> the back part still not very solid. And this was the moment, for example, that I thought that would be cool to to open to to feedbacks. So after I open it to feedback from from friends. Uh, mainly concept artists. Uh, one of them told me about some design principles that I was missing here. Uh, mainly, uh, I was kind of forgetting to to bring design elements from the front part to the back. So, so each of these the sides would like have a connection, have a conversation, like. Um, so, um, for example, he explained it to me about uh, repetitions of elements, some elements that that are like um, iconic, iconic in this in this design. And to me, this was the, this golden this golden details here. Uh, I could definitively brought it to the uh, bring it to the to the back part. Um, also, he explained it to me about uh, how to make things connect in a natural way and not seems like they were just plug it like it is here. Um, and also, if I wanted to get the player attention to this part, I needed to make it this interesting. 
and control better the the detail level and and also I would need to kind of uh, guide the player vision to this part mainly because this these wings are too big and it, it get a lot of attention so if I didn't have this this line guides uh, it would not work so here I started to make some studies about it and and bring in more assets and yeah bringing attention to here it means to to increase the level of the tail here so you can see for example uh here this 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 butt was kind of blending with the torso and bring it up and, and change the pattern there uh, split it the part also I was trying to to create those lines to to guide the player focus to here and I did others uh, other um, tests but I certainly I didn't find the files I, I probably even didn't save save it. So I didn't until I get here. So here I I I thought that I had a a, a nice uh, a nice outcome of these details and and the lines and the way the things started to be connected this was not just being like plug it here i had kind of uh a logic for for the for the for the things and here for example trying to use those those golden details connecting stuff yeah it, it worked like 100 percent or better until I get here and in this stage I use the same workflow like uh, first I did a, a blocking then I did a retopology then I brought into the brush did some adjustment and creases and yeah this was the 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 Capri high poly final result So let's jump to the big ball. Um, to solve the details of the big ball, I followed um, a tutorial on Twitter made by a guy called Manuel de George. Uh, it is a tutorial uh, to make stylized hair, but it was also very useful to me doing these golden details. And I'll share with you. Uh, okay. You start selecting the curved tube snap. Uh, the curved tube snap is just a, a curved tube to that snap in the in the surf superface and the surface of your of your model. Uh, you uh, open the stroke tab and set up your curve like this, like this. You can like set up the way you want. Uh, the way it are now, it is now. It just means that it starts smaller and then go up and then go down. Uh, and mark this size option. So it will follow your your curve modifier modification. So okay. Now you come here to the brush tab and the modifier modifier window here and set up like this. It means that your your uh, curve will have five sides. Um, yeah, three parts. Cool, cool. 
circle. So, um, yeah, it's basically this. But I, I think, if I'm not wrong, I put it in the in three parts, in three sides, just. And I, then I work it like moving it and adjusting to the way I want it. Cool, cool. So the final result to me was this. Um, I didn't finish it until uh, I polished it, high poly, because in this stage I had. I had chosen to jump to hang painting pipeline nor not um, PBR anymore because I wanted to keep me motivated to to finish this piece and I was already working on it for so long that doing something that I didn't like that much a workflow that I didn't like that I wasn't interested in uh, wasn't helping me to to keep motivated. Uh, so yes, I, so this was the way I did the, the big bump. So for retopology, I didn't have a polygon target, trigon target. I, I just had in mind some, some previous informations, like I wanted it to be a character for a game as simple as League of Legends is and and um it would be a boss so um I should have enough polygons to make it look nice. Uh it wouldn't be a regular monster in the dungeon, it would be the main monster so it needed to have uh enough polygon support to to be looking good. Uh, for the for the big ball, it was the same, but I I kind of judged that okay, the big ball is like the environment, so it can be in a high polygon uh, count because it is also a, a a main asset in the in the environment. Uh, but since it, it it wasn't like the the main thing I wanted to show, I didn't care about that much. Uh, so for example, I used those uh, th that base I constructed inside the brush to build my my low poly here. What I did was just like clean it up. Um, Poly loops like this, and the solvent edges where I think that should be solved, dissolved. Uh, but in general, for, for the ball was it, and the character. I used some of the previous retopology I did as a basis to start just pulling polygons, stretching. And, and constructing the rest, for example, here and here, here. It was really useful to me. Uh, it like sp speeded up my work a lot. Um, some technical stuff here was that the belly, I constructed the, the torso like in a curved C. Uh, however, uh, the higher needed to be straight. Also, some parts here, and uh, I needed to to add more edge loops to better to have a better deformation. But uh, in general, uh, was it? Also, something about the hard edges I use it that I forgot to to mention is that I I. Don't need. I don't need all those, um, all these these hard edges. I just mark it 
to have a better visualization in the solid mode. Uh, since I'm just using uh, a diffuse map, uh, the shader inside an engine would be shadeless and lit. So it doesn't care that the, my my hard edges here, they are just duplicating vertices and, and becoming and making this model heavier. So um, you don't need it. I just did it to, to make it look nice in this mode. Okay, like um, if I was uh, export to the engine, I would probably export like this. Okay. Uh, cool. So for the UVs, I wanted to keep it simple, mainly for the monster. So I decided to use a 2K map, uh, just a diffuse. And I tried to, to use the maximum space that I could here. Uh, mainly because it's just a 2K map, uh, so because of it, I, I decided to make some overlays. It means like I would use the same space I use it for this mesh, I would use for this one too. So uh, a lot of meshes here that I knew that um, I, I, I could use this overlay, this mirror red uh, UV, I use it mainly when I knew that the player hardly would see the the two objects at the same time. Like uh, it's very hard to like in a moment of a gameplay, the player look uh, to this two part at the same time and, and think, oh, it's mirror. This this doesn't used to to happen. Uh, so, for example, the wing shells here, the arms, the the legs, the shoulder, all this is mirrored. Um, the head isn't. Uh, the torso also isn't. Uh, but yeah, and also. Another technical uh, thing that I that I thought on wrapping the model was to prioritize UV space for things that I that I judged important, more important. So the the wings, I think it is. So I dedicated more space for it. You can see it through the the quad size here, like as, as small, the the quad here is the better is for because it means that you have more resolution. So you need to think like, okay, so I think it is important to have a good space in the texture for the head. This is a this is a point of. Um, Interest, interest, <laughs> a point of interest for the player, um, and and the wings too for for its size. Um, yeah. Uh, now for the ball, I separated it in three UVs. Uh, one for the for the objects here, some of them are, are mirrored, some of them are not. Um, and one for the little balls, and one for the big balls. Let me do it the better way. Yeah. So, for example, uh, there's a lot of stuff here that are uh, mirrored, uh, so I just just kept it uh, in overlay, overlay in the UV. Also, I used um, this 
add-on to to pack the the whole stuff because I, I I like I I thought that it wouldn't be important to open a perfect UV for these details like I did for the character because it's very messy in the end and it it did it didn't need too much definitions in the UV unless I had a, a technical requirement like for example the orientation but I didn't have so I just did a pack here so it automatically fit the all all the UV shells inside the the quad here so it's a very very useful add-on um, and I did it for the little balls as well uh, another cool add-on that I forgot to mention is this texture density it automatically calculates for you the size of the shells based on the space that this mesh is orbitating in the 3D space. So for example, if I want to use uh, this text density, he would calculate, okay, based on this number, everything needs to be this size. So for example, you can see here the the head uh, in the theory in, in, in the perfect in a perfect text density calculation would be this size, but as I wanted to give it more attention and more resolution, I intentionally scaled up uh, and for the bulb um, I'm using uh, three UV settings uh, but uh, I have a lot of more um, materials here and each of them has a function and I will show you better uh, on Marmoset. For baking process, I use it Marmoset. If you are not familiar with this software, I will explain some of the cool features it has for baking. Uh, the first one is the folders. You can separate each of the pieces of your high poly and low poly in folders it means that uh, it's easy to visualize things if you need to hide it uh, and it's cool when you have like a heavy a heavy sculpture uh, you don't need like to export everything together you can export things separately so if you just want for example update the arm you just export the arm you don't need to do it for everything uh, it is really cool uh, other cool features here is that you can paint the normal directions so you can like kind of save to where the the normals will look in the moment of the Baking. You can also paint in the cage in a mask like this, or you can control it through a slide. It's very, very practical. And yeah, in, in, in general, was this the maps that I baked was the normal object, the curvature, um, the ambient occlusion, the material ID, and the vertex color. The, the vertex color I use it to, I use as a, as the poly painting from the brush that I did, um, um, I use it to serve as a base texture, a, a basic color texture. And the settings here, I didn't change too much. I use a 2K resolution and I, 
I don't like to work with with a large uh, texture map texture, so I choose to just make it two K if the final result of the paint would be two K. So whatever. Uh, the format I choose sixteen bits and the sampler. Oops. And the samples I use it for four. Yeah. This was the base texture I did back in the past. Uh, I would do it better now. I would um, use better the power of the base that I did. But I was kind of understanding how the workflow would work. So that's okay. What I'll do now is to show some of the the layers I use it, the blend modes. It's very messy, so please um, consider that I was also trying a lot of stuff. This was the first version of the texture after I, I did it. I opened it to feedback and the file feedback I'll show uh, after after this. So let's let's do it. The the, the first here is uh, edit two. Probably that were that was a edit one before, but I I don't I don't know what I where is it now. So okay, um, like a lot of the work I did also was I I think I didn't use. Um, so well the the base texture I did, uh, because a lot of a lot of this edit layers are just painting above above the all other layers I did here. And so okay, this this edit one uh, color four is. I don't even know what is this layer is doing. Maybe nothing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. This color are kind of changing the saturation here in the in the in the arm. So it's okay. It's colored each one here. It painted also. Other colors, this layer here. Um, I'm kind of discarding the the original original bacon too. Color it to two here. And, and you have to consider like these layers. I didn't create it in a in a in a time in the right time. Like I, I probably did did this uh, multiply one before all of this. So I did probably did the multiply one first, and then I did the edit, and then I did. So I did the uh, multiply one, two, three. And the logical between this multiplies is the multi multiply one have like the base stuff. The multiply to an um, entry the details. So like okay, the the the, the multiply one is the rough, the raw AO. And the multiply two is the find the tails cool, and the three is a little bit more of AO. And layer. Oh, so you can see like I'm using this logical of the tails and AO in other. Other places. Uh, 
here. Maybe more of multiply. Okay, so here is a, a folder just to solve the fur. So a size folder I have for edit one or edit two. It's probably a slight change. Color. This color edit is just a a line, a AO line. This is brittle, the brittle. <laughs> It's the brightness of the brightness. <laughs> and then I have a brightness. Uh, color, edit one. Okay. Here, color, dodge one. Color dot two. Here I have more for addition, addition. Cool. Holy shit! There's a lot of of layers. This, this layer zero is just a bug from 3D code. This Prito, it means black, it's just a makeup in the face. It's kind of stuff like to maintain separated because it's just a graphic detail. Multiply let's dark. <laughs> Fake fog. Saturation. Screen. Okay. I probably use it this this would be named, uh, would be called Edit 3, because I just painted materially. There's n the, there isn't any blank shape, blank here, sorry. Uh, okay, um, I did use all these, these layers until I find, until I think uh, okay, uh, I'm safe enough now. Like, because using layers is cool to maintain your work non-destructive in a way, but sometimes it also can limit limit you. So I used this, and I, and I had a lot of things that I were that that were. A lot of things that were bothered, but bothered me a lot. Uh, mainly, probably um, value stuff like things that were too dark, and the other things that weren't very was kind of blending. Uh, I, I wasn't. I was trying to understand why, but I, I couldn't yet, so I, I opened it again to feedbacks from friends. Well, after receiving the feedbacks from friends, I unified all those layers in one and started to create new edit layers and evolve to correct some of those um, some of those things that were really bothering me, uh, mainly um, saturation and and 
value. For example, here was a, a place where I was really um, frustrated because this was too dark, but even so, it was blending so much with the with the knee. So in this in this first editing layer, I don't, I already had solved a lot of these problems. As you can see, I continue to add in layer and doing changes. This color dodge layer would make a lot of difference uh, because one of one of my one of those feedbacks I received were like the things were um, the materials was working uh, too similar between them uh, in in the value side and the color side so. When I added this color dodge layer and started to work materials better, you can see things started to pop up and started to be different from each other the way the way they behave. It's probably back here. So yeah, this this was the the final result of my texture for the monster. You can see here after and before uh, my approach for the ball was a little bit different i wanted to be free from the layers as i did in the same in the first process because i was a little bit tired so i just painted everything in the same layer um it was a, like a therapy process too, just painting and trying to understand the color choices, trying to understand um, light and shadows. And for the for the balls I did the same. I have here for example a layer just with blue color so I could get this nice Fresnel from this from this view I added some some more layers editing layers just to be sure And now let's multiply layer to down the values a little bit of where the, the monster would be standard. The last step was to set up everything inside Marmoset. Um, okay, um, let's start with the monster, the Capri. Um, the material I used was I needed to be unlit, so here in the fusion, uh, I think for for the full it came in lumbation. Uh, you just check in and unlit for the monsters 
which is it. Uh, for the balls, I have a lot of them. I, I have like three balls, one side of each other, uh, for, for each one of them, uh, to, to make this, this, this effect. Um, like that inside is, is darker and outside has a, a slightly refraction. So I have a material with, with refraction. It's where I control this index of refraction here. Uh, I have a material for the for the balls that are in the back because they were popping too much uh, because of the glossiness or the intensity. Yeah, because of the intensity. So I needed to make a second material for the for the back balls so it wouldn't be like to brighten like this. So. Uh, I had one material for the underball diffuse and one for this this internal material it, because in this in the underball diffuse I have also a transparency map our opacity map with Ditter. Basically, what it is doing is to hide everything that is black in my in my map. Every every pixel, and and I check it the deter deter option. Now, for example, if you use cutout, it will be very very weird. So the best option was teacher. And the underballs is to control the these colors inside the ball. So I, I would like to make it in a more intelligent way, probably inside an engine. I could use a parallax shader, but I didn't know how to make it in, in Marmoset, so I needed to make a little workout um, and I have one material for the background this is sky material I'm not I'm not using it uh, this is the, the the one I'm using so what I did was put in the important uh, mesh uh, and put it, it inside the main camera in the in the hi hi hierarchy. So when I move the camera, the background moved together. So every angle I look, the background will not change. But in the in the final, it is just a just a plane here. And I set up some some settings here in the in the animation tab, uh, just to say like how how many frames my animation has, so I could export it animate it. Also, I have some lightning in the sky. The the skybox I choose it was this one, but without the lightning, I wouldn't have the 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 level of detail of lighting in this in these areas. So I, I started to add light to to make this effect. So it light I added added a cool effect as well.
yeah that's it guys i hope um what i said here was can be very useful for you all um any uh any question about what i said if i had uh sounded too uh too confused i don't know um you can ask um and um yeah thank you for having me um till the next